Welcome to Executive Insights. My guest today is Monique Allen, Executive Vice President of Data and Technology with OMERS, a pension plan servicing over half a million members in Ontario. Monique spoke about the positive impact of digital transformation at OMERS and what she and her team are focusing on for the remainder of 2020 and beyond. We discussed key initiatives she's driving to advance diversity and inclusion and anti-racism education. We also explored the topic of value-based leadership. And Monique had some great advice for women who are interested in pursuing a leadership role in times like this. Hi, Monique. So great to see you. Thanks for being here. Hi, Nisheen. So, Monique, when I think about OMERS, pension fund comes to mind, but I'm assuming that's not all that you do. So, for those of us less informed, what is the business of OMERS? Well, OMERS is a pension plan that provides more than half a million members with sustainable, affordable, and meaningful income in retirement. We operate in service of our members, both those who are actively employed and those who have already entered into retirement. Our common purpose is what energizes and motivates our team, and we truly believe that this is our competitive advantage. We're also keenly aware that the meaning of retirement has changed, so we're thinking about the total member experience and supporting our members through each of the life, or their life stages. Our youngest member is only 16, and our oldest member is 109. So this long-term relationship with our members expands their financial well-being and reflects the long-term investment approach that we take to support our members for life. Thank you for bringing that clarity. Um, in the world where you know, many customer relationships have become short-term and transactional, it's really refreshing to hear that your business model is so laser focused on cultivating that long-term customer experience and loyalty. So in your role as the executive vice president, data and technology, you're responsible for leading OMER's technology strategy and operations. I can't help but notice, with delight, I might add, that data is in your title. So what's the significance? Well, you know, Nishin, data has always been used in making good business decisions, and undoubtedly, it's the basis of a good plan. Um, what's different today is the breadth of data that's available in our landscape and our ability to gather and process that information in valuable insights from a variety of sources and formats. So as a result, data is now more accessible and it's become easier and quicker to get those insights than ever before. So this allows us to look for patterns and begin, you to, begin to improve our member experience to apply predictive insights and make better decisions. We're working closely with all our teams at OMERS to deepen our value proposition using data and technology. Amazing. So for your IT organization, what would you consider as some of the biggest accomplishments since the pandemic hit? And, and what are you focusing on for the remainder of 2020 and beyond? There's a great quote that I heard from Satya Nadella, so Microsoft CEO, back in April of this year. And he reflected that we've seen two years worth of digital transformation in two months. This is also true for all of us at OMERS and I suspect for many people out there. Um, our shift to remote work styles has strengthened our trust, our culture of innovation and our partnership with all of our teams. We've seen the power of collaboration through our digital tools, which has allowed us better connection and um, a more equitable experience across the organization. So geography no longer matters. In the remainder of 2020, we're keeping a full court press on that momentum. We're looking to expand our digital collaboration tool sets and focusing on experience, digital facilitation, and how we continue to foster trust and promote inclusion and diversity in our teams. That sounds amazing. And speaking of diversity and inclusion, I know you're passionate about many causes, diversity and inclusion and, you know, mentoring and advancing women and also anti-racism education. So, you know, just to name a few, what are some of the key initiatives that you're currently working on and how can other leaders and organizations get involved? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. And, and we've really seen some positive change in recent years. Um, 
yet I, I feel it's still not enough. There are still so many places we can lean into and build a more inclusive landscape. In order to affect change, we, we really need to continue to listen to each other's stories and to be vulnerable and open when it comes to understanding our unconscious biases and privileges. I've had the opportunity to contribute to uh, a great book last year called The Collective Wisdom of High-Performing Women, and that focuses on value-based leadership through storytelling. I'm also a founding member of the Coalition of Innovation Leaders Against Racism, or CELAR, and that's sponsored by MARS. At OMERS, we recently held a series of listening forums to hear the stories of our employees and to better understand their unique struggles. We're internalizing how we can support each other and do better through open dialogue and action, um, including organization-wide unconscious bias training. And biases shouldn't be confused with values. I, I know it's, it's sometimes a, a bit of um, you know, a touchy subject or a tricky one to really get our heads around. We can value diversity and not realize how unconscious bias doesn't always reflect those values. So the good news is that with a little bit of awareness, there's a lot of power to influence change. That's so well said. And I totally agree that we all have power to influence change. And I think as individuals and leaders, we absolutely can do better. And we should start by listening with the intent to understand and to learn. I, I love to explore the topic of leadership with you. I think the pandemic has made us all appreciate what essential really means on so many levels. When I think about leadership, one of the most essential qualities is empathy. I love to hear your perspective on that. I'm also curious about your advice for women who are interested in pursuing a leadership position. Yeah, thanks. That's a great question. Um, in the Collective Wisdom book that we wrote, we focused on value-based leadership and empathy is a powerful characteristic that we talk about. It connects us to one another and allows us to deeply understand and appreciate different perspectives. For women who are interested in pursuing a leadership role, I would say play into those values-based leadership strengths and they might be natural for you. Insert your voice and insert your point of view. The advantage in a time like this is that it's a great leveler in our work style. When we're all virtual, it puts us on equal ground in meetings. So use that to your advantage. If you found it difficult to use your voice in the past and to lean in, write your ideas down in advance and use those prompts to help you out. In times like this, no one can see what's on your screen and tell if you're reading or using a few hints along the way. Thank you so much, Monique. And those are excellent insights and sage advice. I really appreciate your time today. This is another episode of Executive Insights by the IT Media Group. Thank you for tuning in.